and I'll be taking you through the procure to pay process in Dynamics 365 Business Central. The process is relatively simple and starts with generating either a purchase quote or a purchase order. For the purposes of this demo, we'll start with a simple purchase order. Once we have the order, we can start posting the receipt and the invoice. Doing this will update the inventory to increase the item count once they have been received. After posting, we'll need to pay the vendor. Let's go into the system and see how that works. Okay, so let's start by opening up a purchase order. This can be done from your action pane if your action pane is configured to show a purchase order. This is fully configurable and may not be available to everybody. So we can also go up to purchasing and hit purchase orders from the ribbon, or you can go to the search and type in purchase order. And you'll see there it pops up right there. Now we're going to go ahead and open a blank purchase order. And the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to identify our vendor. Uh, our vendor can be identified by the vendor code. You can go ahead and enter that. You can go ahead and enter either a partial or full name for the vendor. Or you can just simply choose from the drop down, select it. We're going to go ahead and choose Fabricam. All right. Now you'll see that a lot of information here has already been filled out for you. Uh, this is imported over from the vendor card. Cannot stress how important it is that your vendor and item cards filled out correctly and fully. Uh, once they are filled out correctly and fully, a lot of the stuff will auto-populate and it will save a lot of time and data entry for your end user. You'll also see that there are some red asterisks here. But these are items that are mandatory and need to be filled out or else the transaction will not process correctly. But for right now, a vendor invoice, since we haven't received an item, item and we don't have a vendor invoice to record, we're going to leave that blank. All right. You're also going to see that the status is open. When status shows is open, it means that it's a work in progress. Nothing is visible for anybody other than you who are entering the information. Once this uh, information has been released, it will be visible to other users. Uh, we're going to go ahead down to our line and we're going to go ahead and order our items. Now we can select type as item, which is the default for this vendor. Um, if there are other options here, like labor, so on and so forth, depending on the type of vendor. Your default should always be set by your fee card. Uh, now, we're going to go with our item. We can either select from this drop-down. We can enter the item number. Uh, and that'll go ahead and streamline things out. Or you can go ahead and put in an item name. We're going to go with the Paris Guest Share Black as our item. You'll see the description. Then we have a location code. The location code will let us know where we want this item to be shipped. That could either be to one of our predetermined warehouses. We can also add a new uh, location here. Uh, let's say, for instance, your client wants uh, the item de delivered directly through them uh, without having to go through our warehousing or delivery. Now we're going to go ahead and enter our quantity. We're going to go ahead and order four of these. The item card is already listed, the unit measure as pieces. We already have a price. We have a tax code area, and you'll see that the price of two items has already been calculated for us. Let's just say that there's been a minor price increase, and we're going to go ahead and go 152.00 under that, and you'll see that our line amount has altered to reflect that. Now, from then on, uh, the system is always going to select from the last price listed, so that will be entered and will be, come up as the new price every time you enter the same item from now on, until it's altered again. You'll also see now that our quantity to receive is 4, our quantity received is 0, our quantity to invoice is 4, and our quantity invoice is 0. That's because we haven't posted any of this, we haven't received it, and we haven't invoiced it. As we move on through this process, we'll see those numbers change, and we'll see the items listed in our warehouse and paid. So when you go into invoice details, there are some other things that you can enter. Shipment method, uh, payment reference, creditor number, so on and so forth. All of this stuff should be entered into your vCard. I'm going to leave most of this blank, but just to show you how this works, let's say our payment terms are CM or current month. You'll go ahead and see that our order date is 4 8 2019 and our due date is 4 30 2019 and that reflects the current month. Let's just say that we don't want to have that current month. We're going to go ahead and do this with a net 30 days. We'll enter that and then we'll see our due date is altered to 5 8 2019. 
everything looks like it's in good order so we're going to go ahead and we're going to start posting these things. Uh, by posting we're going to confirm that we have received the item and we're going to go ahead and click on receive and do this on a one by one basis instead of doing this all in one lot. So we're going to go ahead and click receive. Boom. Now you'll notice that the status is now released and the quantity received is changed to four, which means that we have confirmed that the item has been received and we have the item in inventory. Now that we have the item in inventory, the next thing we have to do in the procure to pay process is to make sure that our vendor gets paid. So we're going to want to change that from quantity to invoice four to quantity invoiced four. So we're going to go ahead and go back to posting. We're going to post and this time we're going to invoice. We're going to click OK. Oh, let's see. No invoice number field has been filled out. That is one of our required items. So we're going to go ahead and take the invoice that we received with the items. And we're going to put in IMB5436. And then we're going to try again. Posting. Post. Invoice. OK. Now you'll see the order is posted as number 108215 and moved to the posted purchase invoice window. I do want to open the posted invoice. We will in a second, but what I want to point out is that now the purchase order 106014 is no longer in the system. It has been processed and invoiced. In order to find this transaction, you'll have to go for the invoice number, which is 108215. None of this information is lost. It's just been moved into a new position to indicate the stage in which the item is in the process. So we're going to go ahead, we're going to open the invoice. Yes. We'll see all of our information here. We can actually add more information if we want to to the invoice at this point. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and leave all of that as is. And then we're going to go ahead and hit print and send. We're going to print this bad boy. Now, we can also send this if your SMTP uh, settings are done correctly. A PDF of the invoice can be directly emailed to the listed email for the vendor in the vendor card. But for right now, we're just going to preview this. Or you can print it as well in your physical printer, uh, or print it to PDF and email it that way. A lot of different options. But you'll see that here is our invoice with all of our information. And we can make sure that that is sent. Now we are back in our main window. And we can go up to purchasing and we can go to posted purchase invoices. And there we see our posted invoice for Fabricam IMB 5436 for 108215. Here it is, ready to go. And that's pretty much it for the procure to pay process in Dynamics 365 Business Central.